Today we're continuing our wonderful book on Farmer Burns, Wrestling and Conditioning, written in 1913, and we are learning so many great techniques you can use right now in a mixed martial arts match or in a wrestling match. This is called the Further Nelson. So let's study it. He wants you to study it. And now why, if you've been following along with me, what's it called further for? That means it's the arm further away from your body. So let's look at this, and then we're going to come up here and study it, because he's, he's explained this one up higher. This is the, okay, the further Nelson. I neglected to point out fully the great value of the further Nelson. This place shows you clearly how Farmer Burns secures a further Nelson that will enable him to swing his opponent to his shoulder. In order to work this hole effectively, you should have the opponent's left arm on the outside of your body and grasp him by the wrist with your left hand, or in some other way lock it so he can't get his left hand free. From this position, Burns can throw his own body suddenly to the left and whirl the opponent with him. This forces, forces the opponent's feet to the air and across Burns' own body, and nothing can prevent the two shoulders from coming to the mat, providing the left arm is hooked after carefully and no loose movement or play is given. Go over this fall and practice it. So here he has the further Nelson, and what he's going to do is just jump and leap and throw him to the ground. So from this position here, he's going to leap to the left. So he's going to leap over here to the left, and he's going to throw his apartment. Now what he's got is backhand, if you, in case you forgot that further Nelson, he has the backhand on top of his other hand. So his right hand is there, but his left hand is on top of it. So when he leaps over to the left, He's going to roll that guy right over onto his back. There's just not much he can do about it to stop him here, as he points out. You just can't stop it if you do it with timing and with proficiency. He just can't stop you from throwing him all the way over and onto his back for an easy pin. Now, in a jiu-jitsu match this position, you'd be in a lot of trouble because he could crank that up and really hurt your neck. He could easily go up there to an arm bar, or he could slide it back and come into a hammerlock. So this is a good technique, folks. It's a great technique. Study it. Learn it. You need to look at this picture, go out in the gym, and practice it till you get the technique. Oh my goodness! This looks like a nasty hole! This looks like a nasty hole. Let's study it here. <laughs> it looks like he's choking the guy to death. Oh my god, what's this one what's it called? This is the... Oh my god. It must be, this one must be down further. Breaking the face hole when the opponent lies down on the mat. Sometime wrestling, your opponent will turn on his mat face, his stomach down. You'll find it very difficult to move him. Oh, absolutely, they sprawl right out there. One of the best ways is to spring on your opponent <laughs> and place your knee over the kidneys and lock both hands across his forehead or face. <laughs> By pulling on the face and pressing down on the back, the opponent will gladly change his position. This shows the opponent breaking the face hole by grasping both hands and suddenly jerking them away. You can prevent this by locking the fingers, or cover the, by, by covering all the fingers and thumbs. This explained in the next lessons. Now, if your opponent should rise up there, you can grapevine him. But so if you got him right here, folks, I, I, I never thought of this. It's amazing the great stuff in this book. I'm just so glad we're doing looking at it. You're putting your knee right in the middle of his back. Now you're reaching underneath his throat, and you're basically grabbing his face and pulling him up in the air. So I've been on a guy's back a lot, but I've never come up and put my knee in the middle of his back. So i got to try this next time you work out. You lock your hand over there, so if you if you got that leverage there, if you locked the hold of your wrist or your hands there, and you put one of them across his throat, you'd be choking this guy to death. You'd have a hell of a lever on his neck, wouldn't you? Now, he's not doing that because this is a wrestling match. Believe it or not, this is wrestling. This is how hard it used to be to be a wrestler in America when it wasn't you know, professional wrestling. It wasn't phony wrestling. So just think what you could do there, folks. You can actually put that hand right there. You actually can choke that guy unconscious with a forearm choke by having your knee in the middle of his back. Isn't this great stuff? I've just never seen such great techniques before. This is, this is super. This is super. Now, if you if you were allowed to do this in a wrestling match, and I'm I'm pretty sure you can't in today's wrestling world in high school or college, but you certainly could in a jiu-jitsu match. Put that knee in the middle of his back, 
and then press on his neck. Oh, I bet he'd be even more effective to put the knee right in the middle of his throat, I mean, of his neck. And, of course, in the street, I would just pound him with that knee right in his back, knee him in the back, kick him. You could stomp his back with from there. You could stomp his head from there. This is a, this is one nasty move. Think of this. In the 1900s, no one even knew how to box. They'd never seen karate. Never heard of jiu-jitsu. These guys must have beat up everybody in the whole town and went out to the next state to try and find someone that could fight them. This guy must have been the toughest guy in the world. Golly, what a move. Oh, my goodness. Now, it looks like the guy's got him picked up in the air, and somebody's kicking somebody in the... Oh, he's got him to the side, or somebody be kicking somebody right in the nuts, in the, in the testicles. The waist lock and grapevine. Okay, so we had it all wrong. Here is a method in which the waist... The waist hold may be stopped to some extent by the grapevine on the leg. Farmer Burns has secured a waist hold, locking both of his opponent's arms to the side, and has lifted him bodily with the intent of throwing him on the mat. The opponent suddenly grapevines one leg. While this does not, not prevent him being thrown to the mat, it places him in a position to offer resistance when they do reach the mat. It is the only defense against the waist hold. While it may not be great, it offers you some chance of a breakaway. So he's got him lifted in the air, and the guy that's being lifted is going to grapevine burns his leg. So he's going to reach in there. It looks like he's just getting ready to start, and he's going to grapevine the leg so they can't pick him up and smash him on the mat. Because when he's got you that low, if you notice how low he's got him on the hips right there, in the street I'd kick him. I'd start kicking my legs and kick him in the nuts, or in the testicles. Your, your elbows are locked, so you can't be elbowing him right there. You can't headbutt him because he's got you too high in the air. But you're only going to have about a half a second to do that, folks. Because unlike a wrestling match, from here, Burns could do a German suplex or just lean backwards and smash that guy's head right on the ground and do him severe damage. He could jump forward and smash that guy's face on the ground. Now, let me ask you something. If I have you hands pinned and I have you around the waist and I jump in the air and smash down forward, how are you going to break that fall? Hmm? If I have your hands wrapped around your waist and I jump forward and smash you onto the ground, how are you going to break that fall? Oh, I think you're going to break it with your nose and your teeth and your shoulders. So, in other words, the fall is going to break your face and your shoulder. So, baby, if you're in this position, you better start kicking. You better start grapevining and hoping, like he says there, to not to win the match, but to, to alleviate the pain you're getting ready to be in. If you threw him backwards, he'd hurt him. If you jump forward from that position, baby, you are going to... You're going to mess him up for a long, long time. So this is, isn't that a great move? You could use this in a mixed martial arts match. You could get around the back, pin their arms, pick him up. And I'll guarantee you, he's going to start panicking. Oh, my God, what's this guy going to do to me? He cannot break the fall. He cannot break the fall. And he's going to let you jump forward and you pull, throw your shoulder into him. It's going to break his face, folks. It's going to knock all his teeth out. It could break his neck. It's going to smash it. Think about that, how simple this is and how effective that is. This is just great stuff. Golly. Now we're going to show you more great wrestling holes, and, and now we're going to cover some self-defense. You can readily see that knowledge of wrestling is a great preparation for self-defense. You know, I, I would go, he wants to tell you to don't neglect practicing, and I trust your and people who want to devote their energy and strength to doing this right. All right, Farmer Baron's School of Wrestling and Physical Culture. And that's, his, that's the book's number six. These are lessons he actually sent through the mail. General Remarks, this will be the concluding book of my series, and I'll outline you some of the work that you've been and I'll, I'll show you self-defense and jiu-jitsu with clear illustrations. If you've made a complete study and you have industrially, industriously practiced every move, you have studied and you developed subject of speed and time, you've already placed yourself in great physical condition, and now an, another man who attacks you is going to be in big poop. The last series combined practice in the future will make you more efficient. It is my advice that every student allow nothing to prevent regular study and practice every day, even if you can only give it a few minutes. Regular practice every day makes an expert out of any man. Do your practice unless you're sick or ill. Use willpower to keep it up. You'll have a wonderful physique. Your fine health and strong body will enable you to have a longer life. You can go on long trips and hunting without getting worn out. Having muscles well trained will be difficult for disease and sickness to attack you. With an athletic body, 
You're, you'll be courageous in life's battle and have tremendous energy and vigor. You'll live a sweet life and you'll play well at work. Wrestling and physical culture makes a man good-natured, but the just as opposite is true of excess and dissipation. Bring pleasure and profit, but the greatest thing you can do is uh, the, the, the purpose of this book is to bring you pleasure and profit and the greatest thing possible for prolonged life and happiness. The medicine ball. Some of the students would have never even seen a medicine ball. Think about this. They had never even seen a medicine ball. Probably y'all don't know what that is. That's just a heavy ball you used to do a lot of exercise with. It's constructed for, for the purpose and maybe purchased for any dealer. It's an important part in the routine of any athlete. It's a large weather ball of considerable weight, yet soft enough to avoid hurting or damaging. Two persons are required when exercising with the ball. It's merely thrown back and forth, but it's not merely just thrown back and forth. It's from a wide position, over the head, to the hands, to the right, to the left, to the side. It should be thrown by bending forward and forcing your companion back between your legs. It's thrown with the right arm alone and the left arm alone and from various positions. The person catching it can catch it first with his right arm, then with his left in various conditions. If you've never worked out, think it's child play, let me assure you in 10 minutes you'll, under, you'll change your mind. <laughs> in 10 minutes you'll change your mind. Jumping the rope is a great exercise. You know from childhood it does wonders for athletic training. There wouldn't be, I would, don't think there'd be much value in this exercise unless you do it regularly. The one point above all of us is I recommend roping jumping with, for fast and easy footwork it develops. It teaches speed and accuracy with the feet and legs, just as bag punching does for the arms and hands. Don't stand in one place when you jump, but move around and jump in as many positions as you can. You should jump at the rate of 300 to 500 jumps a minute. Baby, that's moving. 300 jumps a minute? There's 60 seconds in a minute. I don't think that could be right. That means you're doing 30 jumps a second. 300 jumps a minute, 60 seconds. That's crazy. Some of the greatest boxers in history, they require you punch the bag, jump the rope, and use the medicine ball. I know you don't think you have time for all these exercises, but of course you can't do them all day, every day, but you should make it a rotation two or three times a week. Now the vibrator, this is the machine that used to shake your body. It's great for developing things which seem weaker, but the vibrator agitates the skin and it can cause some blow, blood to flow there, but it tends to, it, I think it loses the muscles, so it's like a, a massager there. It's great for people with headache and nervousness. I don't insist on students using the vibrator because it, they, they, they want to replace a massage person and that's not what he recommends. Care of the teeth. The teeth are the most neglected part of 90% of our people. People didn't use to brush their teeth. It's as important as a milk stool, a third leg on a milk stool. <laughs> you have bad teeth that can shorten your life and poor health. Decayed teeth, unclean teeth, breeding plots. Aching teeth robs you of efficiency. Sore and uneven teeth keep you from chewing your food. It, you know, it's just <laughs> so people don't understand how dirty people's teeth were before. The only way to discover problems with x-ray, brush your teeth every morning and at night. Take care of your teeth and you'll pay big rewards. Poor teeth are a handicap to any athlete. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Importing, uh, uh, training for a contest for six weeks is required to put a man in form. You don't want to have a fight unless you have six weeks to prepare. He'll explain to you the importance of actual training. These instructions apply to a man who's young from 18 to 20. But the amount of work will differ with how old you are and your person's strength. Diet, when you're training, have a definite, when you, your training has, should start on a definite date in the first day. He wants you to take some Epsom salt and castor oil to clean out the stomach. Epsom salt and castor oil makes you poop your butt off. That cleans your stomach out and the bowels. He believes in eating eggs, post eggs, and a weak tea and a light meal. Breakfast should be eggs, toast, and maybe some mutton chops. Noon can be boiled beef and vegetables. Don't eat too much cabbage and do not eat too much of anything. Be sure to chew the food well. Think about your eating and Take your time. Put bread and water, you know, for cooking meals and steak and beans is thoroughly cooked and mashed. Fried chicken and fish once or twice a week. The water should be pure, if possible, from a spring. And if you drink hot water in the morning, it agrees with you. If not, use a weak tea. When you go to your gymnasium, work and skits of wrestling, bridging and gripping after an hour, an hour and a half, should be devoted to the, to the workout. Take a bath, not a cold one, and a good rub with a towel. If you have a trainer, they can give you a good, good uh, massage afterwards. After dinner, rest or sleep until 3 o'clock, and you should go out for a run for 2 or 3 miles. 
then you should mix walking and running. Then you should do another shower. It's good occasionally to rub the body with olive oil or coconut oil. After supper, play a game of billers to occupy your mind or visit your friends. Be a bed by 9 o'clock. Don't take long showers and don't, don't linger. All right, let's come back and finish this up in some.